Hey everyone, we're tackling a topic today that I know a lot of you have been eager to hear more about, and it's one that I'm really excited to dig into as well. We're talking about women breaking into the skilled trades. It's something we're seeing more and more of these days. Yeah. For a long time, these were seen as, well, you know, men's jobs. But the times, they are a change in right. They certainly are. And to help us really understand what's going on, what's driving this change, we're taking a deep dive into this fascinating article. Women in Contracting, Breaking Barriers in the Trades. Great article. It is. So let's jump right in. The article makes it clear. More women are entering the skilled trades than ever before. It's not just a few here and there anymore. It's a real trend. It really is. And it's not just about the numbers either. It's the momentum, the energy that's building around this. Totally. It's like this whole movement is gaining traction. Exactly. So the article talks about this huge increase in women enrolling in trade schools which is amazing. Yeah. What's fueling this shift? Why now? Well, I think it's a few things. For one, organizations like Women in HVACR, which stands for Heating, Ventilation, Air Conditioning, and Refrigeration, by the way. Yeah, got to spell out those acronyms. Right. So groups like Women in HVACR and the National Association of Women in Construction, or NIO, they're really stepping up. They're offering resources, mentorship programs, scholarships, you name it. They're like, come on in, ladies. The water's fine and we've got your back. I love that. It's like creating this whole support system instead of it feeling like you're out there on your own. Exactly, and it's not just about the practical support, it's also about changing the perception of what a, say, construction worker or an HVAC technician looks like. They're showcasing these incredible role models, women who are not just succeeding, but absolutely thriving in these fields. It's so important to see those examples. And speaking of examples, the article actually told this story about a woman who went from being an apprentice electrician to owning her own company. Wow. I know, right? I bet she's got some stories to tell. I'm sure. And those stories are so important because they make it real. You know, it's one thing to hear about statistics, but when you hear about a real person overcoming obstacles and achieving their dreams, it just makes you think, Hey, if she can do it, maybe I can too. It's like that saying, right? If she can see it, she can be it. Exactly. But it's not always easy. It's not like all the barriers have just magically disappeared overnight. That's for sure. So let's get real for a second. What are some of the hurdles that women might encounter, even now, in these industries? The article touched on workplace culture which feels like a bit of a loaded term. It is, it is a loaded term. You know when you think construction site, what pops into your head? I don't know, it's not always the most uh, inviting image. No, not really. You think of like mud and heavy machinery and a lot of, I don't know, yelling. Right, it's a very, historically at least, very male dominated environment. And, and that's not to say that everyone on a construction site is gonna be unwelcoming or anything, but there can be like these unspoken rules, you know? Yeah. These certain ways of behaving that have always been there. Yeah. That can be tough to navigate, especially if you're someone who's never really spent much time in that kind of setting. It's like that feeling of walking into a room and everyone else seems to know each other and you're the odd one out. Exactly, and yeah. then imagine having to like, Prove yourself in that environment day after day while also dealing with the fact that, you know, some people might already have these preconceived notions about what you are and aren't capable of yeah. just because you're a woman. Exactly. And then on top of that, the article talked about the lack of mentorship. Yeah. It's a major obstacle. Right. And, and this is a big one. Because we all know how valuable a good mentor can be, but it's even more crucial in fields like the trades, where so much of the learning happens, you know, on the job, through experience. Imagine, like, you know, starting out as a plumber and not having anyone you feel comfortable asking those, like, kind of stupid questions to. Oh, yeah. The ones that, you know, you need the answers to in order to do the job right. I mean, we're talking about the difference between a job well done and, you know, like, a flooded basement. Oh my gosh, that's a nightmare. Right. So, you know, for women in these fields, finding those mentors who not only understand the the technical aspects of the job, but also, you know, get the unique challenges that you might face as a woman in a male dominated space. Yeah. That can be really, really tough. So it's not just about finding a mentor who's good at their job. It's about finding someone who gets it who's been there. Exactly, and that can be a real barrier. But you know, the article wasn't all doom and gloom, thankfully. It actually highlighted some some really encouraging initiatives that are you know aimed at tackling these very challenges. Okay, so tell me about the good stuff. What's being done to create a more you know welcoming and supportive environment for women in the trades? Okay, so tell me about the good stuff. What's being done to create a more you know welcoming and supportive environment 
for women in the trades? Well, for starters, those organizations we talked about, women in HVACR and NFOE, yeah. uh, they're not just about like getting women in the door. They're about making sure that those women have the support they need to actually stay in the trades, you know, yeah. <laughs> and build successful careers. Okay, so it's like that built-in network, right, it, from day one. Exactly. Mentor programs, networking events, even yeah. like online forums where women can connect with each other, share their experiences, get advice. That's awesome. It's all about creating that sense of community, you know, showing these women that they're not alone. Love that. And then what about the like the business side of things? Because the article mentioned that hiring women contractors is actually good for business. Right. I'd love to hear more about that. Yeah. So it's not just about, you know, doing the right thing, although, I mean, that's definitely a major bonus. It makes you feel good. But it's it's really about recognizing the value that women bring to the table. I mean, think about it. For years, you know, the construction industry, the HVAC industry, they've all operated from a kind of a narrow perspective. This has been such a male-dominated field, right? Exactly. But now imagine you bring in someone with like totally different life experiences, different ways of approaching problems, communicating. The article actually talked about this case study where a, um, a construction firm led by a woman saw a huge increase in client satisfaction after they started specifically hiring more women. Wow. How interesting. What was different, do you think? Yeah. Well, for one thing, communication improved, like dramatically. Clients, especially female clients, often felt like more comfortable, more heard when they were dealing with a female project manager, for instance. And, you know, women often have like different communication styles that can be really helpful in kind of bridging those gaps that can sometimes happen on job sites. That makes a lot of sense. It's like having that translator who can speak everyone's language. Exactly. And it's not just about communication either. Women tend to be like really good at noticing details, you know, the little things that might get overlooked. They're great at multitasking, keeping things organized. Yeah. All of these skills are essential in the trades. Totally. So it's not about like filling quotas or checking diversity boxes. It's about actually bringing in those unique skills and perspectives that can really make a difference. You know, it makes the whole team stronger. A hundred percent. And the really cool thing is, you know, it's starting to create this ripple effect. As more women enter these fields and prove their worth, it challenges those old stereotypes and it paves the way for even more women to follow in their footsteps. It's like they're building a whole new foundation for the industry, you know, like brick by brick. That's such a great way to put it. It's a really exciting time to be, you know, witnessing this shift. And it leaves me feeling really optimistic about the future, honestly. Me too. Yeah. It's been so, so eye opening to like really delve into this topic. So before we wrap up, let's kind of recap what we've learned today. Sounds good. We started by talking about this incredible surge in women entering the skilled trades, right? Right. And how organizations like Women in HVACR and NAWIC are providing this crucial support along the way. Absolutely, yeah. We also got real about the challenges that women still face, mm -hmm. like navigating that male-dominated workplace culture mm -hmm. and finding those all-important mentors. Yeah. But ultimately, I think what we saw is that those challenges are being met with. Like this incredible innovation and determination. For sure. A whole lot of girl power. Yes. And we learned that this isn't just about social progress either. It's about creating a stronger, more dynamic, and ultimately more successful industry for everyone. I completely agree. When we break down barriers and create opportunities for everyone to succeed, we all benefit. Absolutely. Well said. Thank you so much for joining me on this deep dive. It's been so inspiring to explore this topic with you. And for all of you listening out there, I just want to encourage you, keep learning, keep asking questions, keep challenging those old, outdated notions of what's possible. Mm -hmm. Because as we've seen today, when women rise, we all rise.